Okay, so from last week, uh, we uh, wrapped up our microbiology segment and then began talking about plants. And with that, we said we'd try to keep this as short as possible, and that means uh, we do have a lot of vocab terms, and they, have, they will be assigned today. And I don't have it filled out the rest of the week on the uh, east wall, as you can see. But the terms will be due on Thursday, uh, half the uh, vocab quiz one will be on uh, Thursday the 28th and then also on Friday the 29th will be the second half so uh, we'll go ahead and pick up where we left off with from last time and that is dealing with uh, these three types of cells that uh, make tissues in in plants and the first one is called uh, a parenchyma and with that uh, one of the things we had talked about is the idea that uh, these control a lot of metabolic functions. So uh, to help yourselves out trying to keep these separate, uh, for instance, keep the, uh, the two P's together. Parenchyma deals with photosynthesis because it's talking about uh, dealing where all the sugars and all of the water are brought to the leaves. So these parenchyma cells would then be found in, for instance, the, the leaves, probably the, the the, the best place that you would find them, but not in the uh, wooded type of uh, plants, whether it uh, be maple trees or trees or pine trees, okay? But a uh, good place that you would find these is then in uh, non-wooded plants, okay? So we said it's where making of sugars takes place, the storage of water and nutrients, that would also be in, in the roots, so the, the leaves and the roots would be a good place to find parenchyma cells because keep the P in mind with that of photosynthesis. Then the second type, okay, is then going to be what we call cholenchyma, okay, and here you're taking the stems of plants because that is where these plants elongate and the idea that when we talk about plants you have stems, leaves, and roots and the cholenchyma then would be found in that of the stems. And then finally, the last part, the uh, sclerenchyma, okay? And with that, keep your S's together as type of secondary tissue. That would be the best way to try to keep these uh, separate, that uh, parenchyma deals with photosynthesis, cholenchyma then is what you find in the stem, and then finally sclerenchyma is just a type of secondary tissue, okay? It also functions in support. And a good place that you would find that is probably in the stems as well, because that's where the support for these plants would then be, be needed. Okay? So here we talk about the epidermis. And again, just like in human terms, we refer to the epidermis as the outer tissue layer then. Okay? And in the roots, in the most vital portions of those is taking in sugars and, um, and uh, sunlight energy, and that's where photosynthesis takes place, your parenchyma cells. Okay, that's the type of epidermal tissue, okay? And when we talk about a cuticle in human terms, that's, that's uh, basically dealing with your fingernail bed, okay? And I guess you could say this is, has a waxy substance. So that's what we're referring to with that of the cuticle. And again, here we're talking about ground tissue system. Function and storage, plant metabolism, and support. And especially here with the storage and metabolism. Again, the, the metabolic function is taking place in the leaves as well as taking in water for storage in that of the roots. And again, keep in mind your parenchyma cells deal with uh, photosynthesis. Okay? And that's why we see they're the most common. forward then. And it would make sense that, again, when we're talking about photosynthesis, that the cacti
sky, or I don't think it's cactuses, or maybe cactus is plural, cells that we had already established our storage function, and for metabolic reasons, that's why these types of plants would have multiple layers and multiple uh, structures of consisting of parenchyma cells. And then once we get into the vascular tissue, the, the stem, again we said last week, is kind of like a highway between that of the roots and the leaves. Okay, and with that, we associate the xylem tissue that, that transports water. And again, be large amount of parenchyma cells in the roots that take in water and also store nutrients. Okay, and what this does is this xylem tissue then, again, is found in the stems because it transports water from the roots to the leaves. So it's transporting them upwards where you would also have the phloem then type of tissue that is going to transport nutrients back down to the roots and that would be for storage and that's what we're talking about here. Where the sugars are made from these multiple parenchyma cells, with that metabolic functions take place there, make the sugars, send them through the phloem tissue down to the roots to where they can, can be stored. Now, when we look at what we, in, in plant growth, there's two types of meristems. We see uh, there's an apical meristem and then that of a lateral. So just like in, in if you don't call it football, or as if you are making a distinction or uh, what, what I'm looking for, orientation away from the midline of the body. If you take a health class, if something is lateral, means it's away from the midline. So that's what we're referring to if it was a lateral meristem. And just think of that like for trees. We know that as a tree gets older, it adds on another ring. Okay, so that would be an example of a lateral meristem as opposed to that of a, an apical meristem. And there you would see, we're talking about more so on the roots of plants. They, they are common in the stems, but it's more common in the roots is where you find these apical meristems. And especially at the tips, because that's what's growing and anchoring that plant further into the ground, the apical meristem. And that's what we're talking about here, okay? So again, as that tree ages, the lateral meristem grows and it increases in diameter. Again, it's adding on that extra ring. Then the apical meristems is anchoring that plant further into the ground. Okay, so that does it for section 29.1. Again, you have lots of vocab terms to be working on. And until this changes, uh, keep in mind your first evaluation for this, which is on Thursday the 28th. Let me count these up. So I would say perhaps from parenchyma all the way down to epi or excuse me, endodermis and then from paracycle. I think these are in order all the way from paracycle to uh, simple leaf, I think is your last vocab term. And again, uh, parenchyma to, to that of the paracycle. And then or excuse me, parenchyma to endodermis and then paracycle to uh, 
the last vocab term which I have documented as guard cell. I believe that's fairly accurate. So keep in mind your three different types of supportive cells in plants. Your parenchyma type you find in the roots, in the leaves, because they deal with metabolic functions or photosynthesis. Keep your peas together. The colenchyma then is found in that of the stems and it's a supportive function. And then finally a secondary supportive cell would be your skull ankyma. So keep that in mind. Keep your S's together and then your P's together. So we will pick up with this next time.